Hey, Alltel Nation, this is Curtis, your Alltel Diagnostic Consultant. Let me ask you guys something. Have you ever secured a new client and what seemed to be like an easy repair ended up being a potential nightmare? Okay, I'm sure we've all been in this situation and I want to share with you how I actually was this close from getting in that situation, but two minds work better than one. I want to just take you on the ride and show you how I got the client the result he wanted. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to share with you how to replace, program, and calibrate a PCM module on a Ford Escape 2013 with the J254 and Maxisys Elite. Um, what you will learn today is how to locate and remove the PCM module. I'm going to share with you a couple of visuals on how to do that and then how to obtain the information from the PCM module in order to insert the solenoid body ID and strategy. So for those of you who don't work on transmission, this may sound like Star Trek language, but you'll see what I'm talking about later. Um, and then lastly, what follow-up procedures are needed after programming. So when you're getting into programming, there is usually a relearning process. And I, I like to give an analogy like, let's say if I broke my arm and in order to get it you know, healed correctly, I need to go through some type of therapy. That's kind of what coding or relearning is. Um, and having a capable scan tool is vital to do this because sometimes that software from the OEM doesn't allow you to do those things. And then lastly, how to order. All right, so with this case study, we are going to begin with the... Ford Escape 2013. So my client hired me to uh, teach him how to do programming and um, the problem was the Ford software was asking us for this solenoid body ID and strategy code in order to complete the program procedure. So when the client called me up he, he just said hey Kurt I got my new uh, client and I have a programming event we, I need to program this module. I'm like what is this? It's a PCM. It was easy. That's something that we could do. So while we were doing that, the software was saying, hey, you need to put in this uh, Ford strategy ID code. And the problem was when you have a, a blank module, there's no software on it. So I was like, you know, where can we get this? So my job as a consultant was to consult the client and tell him where the cylinder body ID strategy codes are in order to complete the program procedure. My philosophy is there's always a way always away so uh, with that being said let me show you where this module is located on this particular vehicle all right so on the left here it's it's illuminated in the bluish uh, u color and to get there you're gonna have to remove the left hand fender splash shield and that may require taking off the tire and the front uh, fender molding step number two when you see the pcm you're gonna remove the pcm and uh, its cover okay step number three remove the retainers and the PCM and then the last step is to disconnect the PCM electrical connectors which are in the, the purple there okay so as a rule of thumb guys before you you know get excited and take out the PCM when you're working with Fords I always like to uh, keep the PCM uh, on the vehicle before I do a programming procedure, okay? And, and here's why. So, when we were programming, the client already uh, had the PCM module installed. So while we were doing the programming procedure, um, we got this screen, all right? When I click yes, it was asking us for the uh, solenoid body strategy and the solenoid body identification. So I was like, man, like, it's not on the PCM, so I said, you know what, let me do some research and uh, find out where it is. Because if you replace a PCM module, the data, and if the data can't be extracted, all right, the cylinder body identification and cylinder body strategy must be downloaded into the PCM module or manually put in there so the vehicle will work properly. So obviously my next step was to locate the body tag location for the client. So doing my research I found that it's a six-speed automatic transmission and um, they have 
two tags. One is the solenoid body identification tag and the other one is the transmission identification tag. So let's take a closer look and you'll see on the top that's the 13 digit body strategy and then the one below it is the body identification. It's a seven digit number. So I'm, I'm asking the client, so do you see it there? And he's like, Kurt, <laughs> it's not here. It's not here. So I'm like, oh man, let me go back and look again. So doing some more research, you know, digging deeper, uh, I found another location where it was on the solenoid body assembly, which is number six there. And I was like, dude, there's no way in hell I'm going to have my client, you know, pull out the whole transmission just to get this number, you know, and he, he tried calling dealers and stuff like that. So, um, this is where it is. It, it's in a random spot, right? So then I'm like, all right, let's take a break because right now we got a problem. Okay. <laughs> we can't locate the body ID tag. We might need to outsource this job, which I hate doing. And this could be loss of reputation for him and the, his business relationship even for me i mean my credibility uh could could go down because you know he had faith in me that we could do this you know so after taking a break got an idea all right let's ask if we can get a hold of the original pcm module because if the original pcm module uh, it's going to have all that information stored on there. The solenoid identification codes are already stored on there. So my logic was, let's see if I can extract that information on from the Ford software and then write it down. And then when we're asked to put on the new module, and when that screen comes up again, we'll put in those uh, those numbers. So let me show you how I got there. First, we went into programmable parameters, and then we clicked on transmission. And then now we're going to click transmission characterization, all right, which is right there. All right. And then you're going to click the blue check mark. I'm just going to fast forward this, guys. There we go. Yes. Please wait. Now, this is where the system will pull up the information. So you see these numbers right here? Transmission strategy, transmission identification. That's what we needed. So when I saw that, I was like ecstatic, you know, because um, it, it it was like a last minute, you know, thing that we thought of. And he wrote it down. And then um, after that, we can go ahead and proceed with programming the PCM module. So when we do this, we just went to programmable module installation and with programmable module installation, it will tell you when to put on the new PCM module. And when it's going through its thing, we got the same win, uh, window at the end of it, which was this. And I said, all right, go ahead and put that information on there. We click yes and everything was fine. So we were like, oh, thank God, you know, so Lastly, when you do any type of programming procedure, what you'll find often is there's going to be a relearning process. And with Ford, it's usually with the PAT security system. You need two keys to do it. It takes about 10 minutes to get in there. And then once you get in there, you on some vehicles, you need to do a parameter reset. And then you follow the instructions. All right, it's really simple. And with the Autel, you can do this. Um, there's some scanners out there that don't have this option. So even if you have a programmer, if you can't do this, you're going to be outsourcing stuff. All right. And then after the, uh, uh, the PAT security system, um, is done with the two keys, you're going to have to do a misfire monitor neutral profile correction procedure, which you'll find under the PCM option here. Okay. I, I couldn't go any deeper because I don't have it plugged into the car. All right, so this is why it's important to have a capable scan tool. Um, and more importantly, like the, I want you guys to be using your scan tool to its maximum capability. So with that being said, at the end of the day, my client got the results he wanted. 
two minds work better than one. And um, these are some of the things that I learned from that. Um, so always try to keep the original module. All right. Luckily, my client was able to get that back from the uh, auto body repair shop and it, it really saved our behind. OK. Um, second is to obtain access to repair and technical information. Now, I'm the type of person that I like to get answers from the source, even if I have to pay for it. And when you're doing um, things the free way, as I said, if you put wrong information in, you're going to get wrong information out. So rather just go to the source, get the right information, and that way it will prevent you know time being wasted and stuff like that. So um, the third thing I <laughs> learned was to relax when you're under pressure. Now, everybody handles pressure, pressure differently, but what I learned is your, your, your car doesn't have any emotions. Okay, you getting angry over it is not going to change the result. Rather, you know, take a step back, take a couple of breaths, and, you know, just try to re come back to the situation. And that's what, that's what we did. We, we took a step back. We, you know, had time to think and stuff like that. And that's when I got that, you know, epiphany. Okay, hey, let's try this. And then lastly, if you're going to get into programming, okay, have a mentor because they don't give you clear instructions on how to do anything. And there's so much stuff that even me, I'm learning every single day like this one. So just imagine if that was you. Let's say you are going to, you bought the tool and you, you think that the tool could do something and then you can't do it, you know? So having a mentor that's already been there is going to just speed up your, your learning curve. So if that's you guys, I would like to be able to represent people like you. I like to give my clients results so they can get results and learn these skills so they can solve problems. So if you're a auto body repair shop, maybe you're seeing out a lot of work. If you're a mobile mechanic that would like to cater to the auto body repair shop, I like helping those guys as well. Even people who work at home, like let's say you're just tired of taking your stuff to the dealer and you want to be able to do this stuff yourself. I can, I can help you. So, um, with that guys, give me a call 844-210-9020. And uh, you can go to my website, autotech.co. You can set up an appointment, and I'll give you a call and see how I can uh, assist you. And with that, guys, that'll be it. So get consulted, and thank you. Comment, like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.